federal because we can't do it in this town anymore the way it's being done. We need help because there are powers stronger than us, and obviously we are not going to do what we should do that's right. We cannot do right here any longer. We need federal and state oversight, and I'm going to say it until someone comes here and helps this Board of Education because we are lost. Cynthia Cleaver, roll call. I, I, I want to make something clear. What would happen if, if um, since we don't know the enrollments for next year, because children are always coming into the district, Mr. Mr. Finger, if, if there were, um, say, another 25 or 50 IEPs for children to be placed in special schools, such as Collier and Shy. And uh, if there was, if there was a, a, a IEPs and maybe another 25 or 30 children that needed to be placed into, into uh, um, some of the, the, the OTPT programs that, 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 that public school children um, are, are qualified for, I want to know where will we get this money if we start off behind the eight ball. And what I need to know is, are we going to have a budget deficit? Now, I know it's very, very, very difficult to, to, to project something of this nature, of all things considered, but what will happen if, heaven forbid, there are more children who need these more, more services? For the chair, I think the same thing that would happen with any budget that you pass. There's always unforeseen situations and circumstances which can arise, and no matter if you, if you adopt option number one, or if you adopt the township option, which are basically both 0% increase, the same thing would happen if, if you have something which is, arises unforeseen. It makes no difference. That happens with any budget that you would pass. Mr. I, I share Mr. Singer's uh, uh, Mr. Silver's uh, response, but I, I did ask Mr. Finger, not Mr. Not no. Mr. Mr. Silver Stryker, if I may. Through the chair. One second. He's answering my question. Just. As with any budget, a budget is not something set in stone. It's something that changes throughout the year. Right. Anything could happen the same. I mean, I, I understand where you're going to something that keeps me up at nights, too, because one never knows how many students will show up in any particular district. At the same time, it could also be less students. So it's something that we monitor on a monthly basis when we do our, our, our monthly reports. And when I need to make transfers, I have to come to the board and say we need to put more money in another line account. It's, uh, it's just the nature of the way it is. Is there, uh, maybe I can ask the, the assistant superintendent or the superintendent, does she have any projection on, on, on how much the, the population of, of uh, the district will be next year, next year's uh, school year? We're not aware of any demographic studies. I do know that there are more children um, every year, but I also want to say that a zero-based budget will not assist us to accomplish a thorough and efficient education. Through the chair? Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Thomas? Yes, go ahead and speak, Mr. Fink. I think with everyone who has been voicing some concerns, I think I would like to make it very clear and easy for everyone in this room to understand if there's two areas that run into issues of under budgeting, I think we should target transportation and IDEA. I think that a good uh, step in the right direction was at $472,000 in transportation cuts has been a, a start, <coughs> but I think if there's an area where some budgets need to be addressed, we should concentrate on, on the busing and the ITEA. Not to cut it, to increase it.
Yes. Mr. Thomas. Option three, Mr. Thomas? No. Mr. Zlotkin. Yes. Motion passes. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll make motion.